Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to turn your PC into a console-like experience. We're gonna be putting some of the products you might need if you want to make this the best console-like experience in the description down below. But most of these tricks and tips are free. It just requires a little configuration and kind of uh, creative thinking. So that's the good news. Now guys, before we start this video on turning your PC into a console, I am one of the only YouTubers out there with no monetization on my channel. I have no YouTube ads. But if you like this video and you want to help support me, maybe check out some of the VPNs on VPN tier list. I'm one of the only YouTubers who has an objective rating system, rating VPNs. VPNs, as you know, are good for unblocking geo restrictions and getting more general privacy online. I have a data table ranking all of them. Not only that, guys, but if you want to protect your IRL information online, if you're part of some Discord or something like that, if your real life name leaks, someone could find your address and start harassing you online. That's why I recommend a service called Incogni. It will remove your real life information from websites like White Pages and hundreds of others out there. So it's a good service to check out, and I'll be putting a discount in the description down below. Anyways, guys, back to the video. The bad news is, is there are some things you can't do with a PC that you can do with a console. One thing that you can't really do uh, is the unique hibernation feature that consoles have to resume play and stuff like that. It's probably the best thing about a console that it's kind of too hard to replicate with Windows right now. However, with the PC, some of the benefits you do get are always getting 60 FPS if you have a powerful enough PC, a lot more mod support, you get more um, graphically enhanced uh, experiences with a wider variety of different controls to change the way the game looks, which is good. For me, I like to use a PC instead of a console for a lot of games because I want that 4K 60 Ultra FPS, buttery smooth, top of the line experience and you can't really get that on consoles even when a console comes out lots of times it's like oh two years later xbox series x starfield do you want to play 60 fps too bad it's 30 fps and it kind of looks like shit on my pc i'm rocking 60 fps 4k ultra baby and for the most part it does kind of have that convenience of a console without that resume play button but if you get a fast enough SSD, it doesn't really matter anyways because games load lightning quick. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and discuss some of the things you'll need. First up in this section, we're going to be talking about some of the hardware I recommend to make this the best experience. All right, guys, so one of the things I do recommend, of course, is a Microsoft Xbox wireless adapter. Now, this is probably the best best kind of setup for Steam uh, because most games do kind of natively support Xbox. Now you can use a PS5 if you want to get a Bluetooth adapter and lately it's been working pretty good to use the PS5 controller. I was testing it yesterday with pretty good results. That said, one issue I've had is that in a game like Starfield or something like that, it's going to natively tell you uh, the tutorials are going to be in Xbox language. So it can be kind of confusing mapping the different buttons to PS5 in your head. So generally, I would recommend an Xbox controller. Now, don't be tricked. There are a lot of knockoffs on Amazon, uh, third party models, kind of fake Xbox adapters. And a lot of those I actually got tricked with and I didn't realize they weren't official until I read some reviews. And I was wondering why I always had so many disconnects connections and various issues like that get this one this one works the best and it's only $35 on Amazon the official one so make sure to get that as kind of like your way to connect your controller Bluetooth next thing I would kind of recommend is this thing it's called X pen mini key dial wireless shortcut Bluetooth um, kind of macro pad now the cool thing about this is it has a couple different buttons here and it's wireless um, so the cool thing about this is when you need to bypass the login screen for Windows, you could just have this kind of next to you, maybe sitting in a little pocket next to your couch, um, kind of sitting there. You could just tap one button on it and bypass that thing without needing a full size Windows keyboard. The cool thing about this, too, is you can also customize all the different little keys if you want to mute the audio or something like that. So it's kind of up to you. This is not necessary. You might have a Bluetooth keyboard already, which is always handy to have when controlling various aspects of your computer. But this is what I've checked out recently, and it's pretty cool. So I would recommend it. Also, this might be a little overboard depending on how you see it, but I actually find these very useful as well for managing your remotes and especially for things like your controllers or even just those little devices. Like I said, getting something uh, like a sofa organizer for your stuff can be very useful just to keep everything organized. So I'll be putting a link for this category of items as well uh, in the description down below. This one's kind of cool, but it doesn't seem to have prime. 
But there's a variety of different styles and different kind of colors that you can choose from depending on your individual preferences. All right, guys, so now that we've talked about some of those hardware things you're gonna need, let's talk about some of the software components. So a lot of the things that I recommend are gonna be done within Steam because Steam has kind of like the best um, kind of library of games, it's really good reviews, and it has the best kind of console-like experience with Big Picture. And that's primarily what we're gonna be focusing on. Well, if you go up here in the top left, you go to settings, you go to, uh, go down here, go to interface, you're going to scroll down and click here, um, start Steam in big picture mode. So you're going to want to uh, start or click on this to enable this. And you're going to want to click on run Steam when my computer starts. So this basically means that when your computer starts up, it's going to start Steam and it's going to put it into big picture mode, which is going to give you that most console like experience right away. That's kind of what you want to do. You just want to start up the computer and get straight into gaming. And that's what it does. Another thing is though, guys, that I would recommend doing that you might not have thought of that I've recently decided to do is you do want to put it into a, a borderless window mode. You don't want it to be full screen. And why is that? Well, what I've found is that sometimes when you exit a game and it's just full screen mode, the controller kind of gets like stuck. You can't really like get back to the menu, but for some reason having the borderless mode doesn't have that same issue. So how do you do that exactly? Uh, here we go. Uh, top right for me, enter big picture mode. So you want to do big picture mode, uh, windowed and it's going to look, um, well, depending on like what kind of display you're using. So you want to do it windowed. I think this is the best way I've encountered less bugs with it for some reason. I don't know what it is. Um, it, depending on if you're using a TV, it'll be pretty big. So it shouldn't look too bad. Um, and it will just seemingly work better for some reason. Another cool thing is that you could change the shutdown time for your controller, which is a nice kind of console like feature. You could also install the Xbox extended feature support driver. Not really quite sure exactly what that does. So apparently it enables up to 16 controllers at once, as well as bindings for the Xbox Elite controller. So if that sounds like something you do, you probably should enable that feature. Otherwise, for most people, you probably don't need to enable it, actually. Another thing, guys, that you want to do when using big picture mode, if you just put your computer, like let's say you're done playing, if you just put it into sleep mode or on Windows 10, it's going to be called, I do believe it's called um, like suspend or sleep. It kind of depends. I think it's like for some reason suspend or sleep. But either one will put your computer into a sleep mode. So uh, this way, once we're done setting up a couple of other things, when you push a button on your controller, it will actually start up your computer and be right where you left off in this Steam Big Picture mode. So that's what makes it console-like experience. But if you turn your computer off, it's not going to have that same effect. So whenever you're done playing, just put your computer into sleep mode. So it'll save energy and be able to reactivate when you want to play. All right, guys, one more thing before we do something else is we need to make sure apps are not starting up on your computer. The way you do this is go to click the Windows button and then click Startup Apps. This is where you can also do this from the Task Manager. But basically what this does on Windows is that you could change which apps start up. Generally, for a console like experience, you want as le least uh, as less less apps starting up than usual. Um, so anything you don't need for gaming, just go ahead and shut off off this will make the computer start quicker and less things will get in the way and pop up just something to remind you so turn off a lot of those apps so they don't start up when your computer starts up you really only want steam starting up and that's an important thing to remember to enable because we enabled that feature where it starts up if this is off right here you won't have steam starting up and i ran into that issue but just a little reminder so guys one of the last things you also need to do is turn usb bios on in your bios Basically what this is going to do is make it so that when your computer's sleeping and let's say you push the Xbox controller uh, button or Xbox button on your controller or even something like one of the buttons, it will activate the computer from sleep mode. Um, so this is something you need to enable in your uh, BIOS. It's going to be, so this guy's talking about it right here, how to enable or just be able to USB port power on the PC is switched off. Uh, and this is exactly how I did it. So I just went to settings and then I do believe I went to the, uh, I think I went up to the, yeah, the wake up event and then I did uh, resume by USB device and that's really what you want. Um, so that way when the computer's sleeping, you can turn on the computer essentially with your Xbox controller. But you might be saying, well, wait a second, Tom, when you turn on your computer, there's going to be that annoying Windows screen. 
Now let me know down in the comments down below. I've tried a couple different tricks and tips and even applications to make that screen completely bypassable. But for some reason, when you put your computer to sleep and wake it up again, it wants to say hello. Basically what you have to do is push enter to bypass that and Steam will start up normally. So that is why I recommended getting this little device. This is a small little device that you could just keep next to you and push enter and bypass that as quickly as possible. And it's only around $50 with some other cool functionalities. Or if you want, you could just keep a wireless Bluetooth keyboard nearby and push enter. It is annoying. Uh, let me know, like I said, if you found a way to bypass it, but I couldn't find any way to bypass it in Windows 11. Um, but yeah, that's something you do kind of have to work around, but it's not a huge deal uh, considering that the kind of convenience factor of you don't have to get up and go to your computer or anything like that and turn it on. It's pretty console like. Now I did find this Reddit post from a couple months ago that even just today was updated. It seems like other people are also trying to figure out this issue. Uh, this guy says if you go to your settings and sign in options, uh, make sure to turn off Windows Hello. And then if you go to your taskbar and search and type net pl wiz open it there should be an option to turn off a setting uh, that will require a password according to these people it should work this guy says after you know lots of other things it didn't work and according to that this does work so i'll be putting this on the screen just if you want to pause it and follow these instructions and i'll be testing it as well let me know down in the comments down below if this works for you and i might even pin a comment to let you know if it worked for me the last thing is you do want to add your games to Steam for easier launch. Now I found a unique way that you can add pretty much all your Game Pass titles to Steam, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So guys, basically there's this tool called UWP Hook, and basically this will kind of scan your computer and let you add anything to Steam. Very nice. The only bad thing is you are missing some of the icons in Steam, but generally this is a very cool tool and you can find it by Googling UP, do UWP hook and it should be on GitHub and this will let you scan your computer and add games very quickly to Steam. So there you go. Even Game Pass games can be added directly on a Steam to launch very quickly. Now guys, let's get a little bit meta. Here I am at the end of this video in my video editor, wondering the question, is it perfect? Now. I don't really think so. You can't perfectly make Windows into a console-like experience. And honestly, that really does piss me off. I wish Windows would just make their PCs more like Xbox. And I think part of the reason they don't is probably because they want to sell Xboxes. It's kind of like how Apple doesn't really give any of the Macs touchscreen functionalities because they realize people would stop buying iPads if people could draw with their Macs and not need an iPad. So that's kind of probably what Windows and Microsoft are thinking but it's pretty annoying. There are a little bit of issues I do kind of run into. I did say that with that USB BIOS method and turning on your controller, most of the time it should start your computer and kind of like a console would react. However, today I had the issue where my controller connected, um, but my computer didn't turn on. I wasn't even sure how my controller was connected. Um, so what I did is I restarted my computer and then for some reason the controller was working again. I decided to turn off every battery saving thing on my computer, whether that be uh, sleep after an hour or something like that. Hopefully that fixes that issue. Um, but I'm not really quite 100% sure, honestly, why my controller acted that way, even with using the official Windows Xbox adapter. I've seen other people report um, issues with controllers as well with PC, varying issues of varying different things which isn't always as common on Xbox. I was just discussing it with my friend and I find that it's just a little bit annoying enough to get everything perfect with the PC that it does make me wanna just play on Xbox, but there's not quite enough issues to make me wanna play on Xbox because the, the trade-offs of playing on Xbox are worse. Having limited FPS, having worse graphics, um, having limited compatibility with past games, like let's say you want to play the 4k version of a game that is kind of recent um there's a specific example of a game what was it exactly it was a game in my library i just i just fucking saw it on this the store what was that game um plague tale so yeah this game 
Uh, the one before Plague Tale, I think it was called the original one. I can't remember the one before this one. Uh, for example, on Xbox, it looks like shit. There's not even a 4K version. It runs, uh, you know, I think it's like 1080p, 30 FPS or something like that. If it's 4K, it runs at 30. And it just doesn't run quite as good on Xbox as does PC. A lot of the games didn't really get updated for Xbox Series X. And if you want to play a lot of older games... Um, like let's say uh, Red Dead Redemption at 4K 60 FPS. The only way to do it is on PC. So there, you, you, there are a lot of trade-offs. There's some minor annoyances, you know, like today. It didn't work the way I wanted to. Um, but if I had maybe just used my keyboard instead of the controller to turn it on, just push enter on my keyboard, that probably would have worked. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what the issue was there. I just wanted to have these kind of rambling thoughts. You know, is, is this a perfect, perfect experience? No. Is it going to make your PC feel much more console-like and convenient to use most of the time? Well, uh, yeah, probably. Anyways, guys, let me know what you thought down in the comments down below of this video, and I'll see you again very soon.